It's another night of Vanderbump Rules in the Valley. We're going to be recapping both for you today. We have Billy Lee, who's back. We have um, the annual tasting of something about her. There's something about her that we can't stop tasting. Um, And then we're going to talk about Jax getting messy with Kristen's ex on the Valley. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter. Your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TVT, Surf Fresh, all week long. Now, let's dive in. And dive in, we shall. It is our regular Wednesday, our weekly Wednesday Vanderpump Rules recap. Talking all about uh, Vanderpump and now, I guess, The Valley, since they air back-to-back, and we like Jackson, and Kristen. And I just have to say, the cast of The Valley is clocking in. They're clocking in like it's 2007, and they're trying to make some tips at Sir. They're like, we're here. We're here to collect. We're here to work. And I just have to say, hot take. You're not going to like it. You're going to drag me. You're going to be all up in arms. You're going to get the pitchforks and you can shove them up your ass. Lala Kent is carrying this season of Vanderpump Rules, okay? Put some respect on Lala's name, okay? Lala is carrying the show on her back. She is pushing the narratives. She's pushing the storylines. She's getting people to work for their paychecks. She knows what to do, right? She's getting us to... to, hold Sandoval accountable, but we're also getting to see a different side of Sandoval. We're seeing some growth and evolution in her. We see her being a voice of reason. We see her throwing shade in her confessionals. We see her trying to get Rachel back into the group, which was a perfect bridge, but she fumbled the ball. Um, Lala is the MVP of this season, period, end of story. Okay? Period. Done. Drop down. Expensive. And I still don't give a fuck. It's expensive to be me. Eh, 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 eh. Okay, so this week we saw the return of Billy Lee, which everyone I know is so excited about. I know you guys were all on the edge of your seats just awaiting for the return of Billy Lee. She's finally come back in full force. She's helping Sandoval as he's putting his bed together. And she's like, you need to go and get back out there. You should date my friend T. No, she's not a drug. She's a real person, and you should date her. And he's like, well, I guess I made my bed, so might as well just give it a shot, right? And she's like, but isn't it weird? She's like, there's like living with your mom, and there's living with your ex. You need to stop living with your ex. He's like, I know, man, but my my ex won't just leave. God, God, Billy. She just just doesn't want to go. So, like, I tried to poison her dog, but, like, it didn't work because she didn't leave. God. And so... Now we see that Tom and Ariana are still living together and it's making their dating lives very challenging. I don't know how Ariana is doing it because she has Dan. Well, I guess Dan doesn't live in LA, but still, like, I guess he never comes over. That's weird. That's weird. But the living situation is weird. And now Ariana has her house and she's doing great. And then today we saw that she was just um, announced as the new host of Love Island. And Sarah Highland is out and Ariana Maddox is in. So good for Ariana. She's doing the damn thing, right? And then we see Anne. And Anne, you know, is so excited to be in the same house as Ariana. Um, And she wants to work for Ariana so bad. Because Ariana is looking for a new assistant. And Anne being the pick me girl that she is. She's like, ooh, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. And then Ariana's like, okay, I'll pick you, pick you, pick you, pick you, pick you. And Sandoval has no clue that, you know... Anne's trying to jump ship and trying to go work for Ariana, which is just going to make things really weird. And then Ariana's smart about it. And she's like, listen, let's just wait until like maybe I'm out of the house because I just bought a $1.26 million home that I'm about to move into. But I need Sandoval. Like, this is the other thing. I'm just like, where and why have we not moved out of the house yet? You know, Lala made a really good point this this episode where she's like, I know her about her endorsement deals. I know she's making money. I know she can afford an apartment on her own. If the rest of them can afford apartments on their own and they're not on Dancing with the Stars and they're not doing all these additional endorsements and getting Lifetime movies and all of that, then there's no reason why Ariana should move out of the house. Shouldn't move out of the house. She can still fight for the house and fight for the sale of the house, but it's just weird that she's still living there. It's weird that Tom's still living there, but it's because he still wants to live there. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Um, is Ariana's new place legit? Too legit to quit? What do you mean is it legit? She bought it. She paid for it. It's a house. Is there a house that's not legit? I mean, if it's like sketchy. I mean, trust me, I live in downtown. So sometimes when you're passing by Skid Row, you're like, oh, is that house legit? You know? 
because it's a 10. But, or is that fake news? No, it's not fake news, Stacey. Do you think I'm going to give you fake news? What do you think? This is up and at him and I'm going to give you fake news, please. I shouldn't be a bitch. I shouldn't. Sorry, that was bitchy. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. That was a cunty thing to say. Um, I'm just feeling a little spicy today. Uh, well, I feel spicy every day, but you know what? Today I'm going to own it, baby. Own it. Uh, Mallory says, why should Ariana have to sell out more money? Why should Ariana have to shell out more money just because she has it? Sandoval should leave. Snap, snap. Well, Mallory, because Ariana doesn't want the house. Sandoval wants the house. So that's why I think she should leave and he should stay because he's trying to buy her out because he wants to stay there. And she doesn't want to stay there. She want, like, she wants to, she doesn't want to be in that house. Who wants to be in that house with all of her cow's coochie juice? No, thank you. Okay. I'm saying she should leave because she doesn't want to be there. And it's like a toxic, unhealthy environment for her, like mentally and emotionally. You know, Sandoval's like, I want to bring chicks over and I want to bang them in my room. God. And so, you know. Counting someone's money is weird. I agree, Yazzie yeah, J. It is weird, but you know what? People do weird shit all the time. They sell their farts on the internet and they sell pictures of their feet. I think that's weird. But, you know, these are the times that we live in. Mallory says, just because you can afford it doesn't mean you have to. Uh, Sandoval wanting to blow all his money with his performance acts and then maybe he could afford it. I mean, maybe he can afford. Well, I don't know. In this episode, so we see that he, his attorneys, they made Ariana an offer, and he's claiming that it's a really good offer. And for whatever reason, she doesn't want to accept the offer. They're not responding to the email. So in this week's episode, we see him, and he approaches her, and he's like, "Um, hi, Ariana. Like, it's me, your boyfriend, and I know we're together for like ten years, but like, you're not returning my emails, and like, I just want to know, like, did you change your number? Because like, you haven't heard from you, and like, God, what are you looking at? La la. Uh." But, you know, and he's like trying to talk to Ariana, but he's like, oh, and she's like, why are you talking to me? And he's just like, I don't know. I just, you know, like, I like, I miss you. And like the vibes that we had when we were doing mushrooms, it was like ecstasy, but it wasn't ecstasy. We were doing mushrooms and it was like psychedelic. And like, did you get my email? Because my attorney's been trying to like reach you. God, you know, Sandoval and his first amendment of freedom speech lights. Yeah. Listen. I get it. A year ago, he blew up their lives and she kind of is better for it. Just move on. I agree. Like, she's killing it in life right now, right? I think, like, just, I've always said, like, just sail off into the sunset, leave him in that trash house. Like, I get, like, I get she wants her furniture and stuff. Like, she should still have access to the house. She should still have a key to the house. She should still be actively fighting for the house. But I just don't think living in that house is very good for her mental health. And he doesn't want to move. So I just don't think it's healthy. You know, good offer is subjective, especially with Tom and Ariana. I agree. Him saying it was a good offer is subjective. He said it was above market value um, or it was about market value. So, I mean, I would assume there was some sort of appraisal that had to have been done to determine market value. I don't know. Maybe he went on Zillow. He was like, God, Zillow is worth this much. Ugh. And so then he determined that like that was what he was going to pay her out. She doesn't want him to be. She doesn't want to be paid out for whatever reason. I, well, she said she doesn't want him living in that house. You know, he made her a cash offer of three point one million. Yeah, which is more than what they paid. Didn't they only pay two million to move in there? So, I think just take the house and move on. You know, uh, Mallory said, "I'll keep my fucking stiletto in your neck until I decide when it's done." Listen, and good for you. I ain't even mad at that. That's you. And if that brings you joy, then you keep this that stiletto. You keep that that stiletto on his neck. neck. Not today, neck. Stiletto smash. These is bloody shoes. But so we also see Schwartz reveal to Lala that he um, made out with Sheena in Vegas. And Sheena and Lala's like, what? You made out with Sheena in Vegas? Like, this is so crazy. And Schwartz is like, yeah, you know, it's just like, it was, you know, we were just having a good time. And like, you know, that day she like didn't brush her hair. And I like have a thing for girls, like just don't brush their hair. And like, Sheena was just turning me on. And like, Katie was just like, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And then Lala's like, you're crazy. This is nuts. How is it that you've kept this secret for 12 years she's like you were with katie and he was like yeah and she was like does katie know about this and he's like no and so she's like you know what i'm gonna blow shit out. i'm gonna stir the pot i'm gonna keep the storylines moving i'm gonna make sure we have a show so i'm gonna take this little nugget of information i'm gonna take it back to katie 
And so she invites Katie over for a cocktail and Katie brings her own cocktail kit because Lala doesn't drink. So Katie shows up with a bottle of, of um, liquor in her purse. Like she's Sutton Strack, JK. I don't know if that's true. I'm not making that accusation. Sorry, I, I like Sutton. I don't want any Southern twang peeps to get mad at me for, for shading Sutton. Um, but yeah, she shows up. She has a bottle of like tequila and it's not even like a good tequila, but it's like, okay, she's got a bottle of tequila. She's making a drink at Lala's house. And Lala's like, so by the way, FYI, just in case you were wondering, your ex-husband that you're no longer with anymore, he happened to make out with Sheena. And, and then Lala very conveniently said a few years ago, where Schwartz told her it was 12 years ago. Little shady, right? Deborah says, did, did anybody see where Bethany Franco got hit in the face? I don't know. We'd have to ask Sheena. She's probably the one that did it. Yeah, there was a story going around where Bethany Franco got punched in the face. And people are like, what? Why did she get punched in the face? And I was like, I don't know. They probably saw her fucking TikToks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being a bitch tonight. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, not that it's like we shouldn't just go around punching people in the face. Right. I don't and I don't endorse that. OK, I'm not saying go and punch people in the face because they eat cottage cheese and on a scooped out bagel on TikTok. But Sometimes that's just how life goes, you know? Anyway, back to Vanderpump Rules. Everyone wants to talk about everything but Vanderpump Rules tonight. Deborah, Deborah, you know, what a deserving victim. Deborah, Deborah's like choosing violence. It's like, who punched Bethany? Where's the video? Receipts or it didn't happen. What? Deborah's, Deborah's hardcore tonight, ruthless and toothless. Um, but anyway, so she tells Katie. And she says that it was only a few years ago and it wasn't 12 years ago, which I thought was a little shady. Um, but then Katie gets all fired up because it doesn't take very much to get Katie fired up. Katie's like a, a, a gallon of gasoline. You get a little match near her and it's like, Phew. she doesn't even, that's how, when she's like, I'm going to set you on fire. That's what she means. You're just going to fire it up and shoot on you, you know? So speaking of shooting, burning people on fire, she doesn't like Joe. And everyone, everyone on the internet, internet is like, oh, I feel bad for Joe. I'm so, poor Joe. Oh, poor Joseph. That's what Schwartz calls her. He's like, oh, poor Joseph. And I'm like, the only thing I feel bad for is Joe's hair because it needs a brush. It needs to be combed out. Like, I don't know what she has against dry shampoo. As a hairstylist, I would think, you know, I thought Sheena made a very valid point when Sheena was like, why is she wearing a hat? She's a hairdresser and she has braids on. Why is she wearing a hat? And of all things, why is she wearing a Tom Tom hat? It was weird. And clearly they have a relationship with Joe. And listen, Joe is fucking weird. I'm sorry. She seems like a lovely girl and she talks to aliens and good for her. Right. But like, I wouldn't be all that jazzed to hang out. With, like if I had to hang out with Joe, like sometimes you're, they're just not your people. And I don't get why Joe would want to hang out with any of these girls. Anyway, they have nothing in common. I don't get why the girl, like I get why the girls don't like her, but I don't get like why it has to be a thing. Like why is Joe even around? Joe doesn't want to hang out with them. Joe doesn't care about hanging out with them. They don't care about hanging out with Joe. They, Katie wants to beat Joe up. Why would you want to be friends with somebody that wants to beat you up? You know? I just, I, I agree. Don't wear a Tom Tom hat with, and hide your braids. If you have beautiful braids and like show them off girl titties out. But so none of, they're all there to support James, but none of them want to support Joe. And then we have Allie and Allie comes in peace. And Allie's like, hi guys, we should absolutely love Joe because her moon is in Uranus and, or actually her moon, her moon is in Schwartz's Uranus. And, you know, she just, she comes with love and peace and she's an air sign and all the angels and the fairies just lift her up. And, and when she was taken by the aliens, you know, they made sure that they worked on her brain and that's why her hair needs to be brushed. She's cuckoo, okay? And and Allie's trying to get everyone to see that like, she's not cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. She's just a really, she's just a really nice girl because her Taurus is is rising right now and her Uranus is under Schwartz, you know? And I'm just, and they're like, okay, Allie, you just got here two seconds ago, girl. You better count your blessings because you're about to get kicked out of this group real quick with that, you know? So then we move, we we see that Allie just wants to come in peace and Katie just wants to come in chaos. And normally Katie irritates me, but I actually relate to Katie, you know? So I, I don't, I see why, you know? And then we have the scene with Tom and he wants to approach Ariana and Lala's like, 
I don't get why Ariana is still living there because she can afford an apartment. And then finally, we see Katie confront Sheena about the makeout in Vegas. Which I know there was a lot of, oh, sloppy Joe. Oh, everyone's calling her sloppy Joe. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, uh, she is a bit of a sloppy Joe. But you know what? Listen, that's her vibe and she owns it and good for her. Like, I don't want to knock the bitch. Like, good for her. I ain't mad at it. I just don't care to be around it, nor do I really want to see it on TV. You know, I like Joe. She and Schwartz are a lot alike. You're sassy tonight, Zach. I'm sassy every night. Um, but I mean, listen, you can like Joe. I just don't. I can't stop thinking Joe looks just like Amber Heard. <gasps> yeah. You know, like the low budget Amber Heard. Like she does look like Amber Heard. You know what they were saying? Amber Heard and Amber Turd. <gasps> We've cracked the code. Well, that said, then we get to the annual tasting of something about her because there's something about her that we just can't quit. And so we're back and Lala's like, okay, we're here again. Or actually, oh no, before that we see Lala and she makes up with Sandoval. And he, she, they have like a mocktail night and Sandoval comes and Lala comes and he's like, hey, I want to invite you to my, my sound bath therapy and she's just like, that's weird. I don't like you because you're a groomer. And he's like, yeah, but I come in peace. And she's like, okay, I forgive you. And so she goes and she shows up and she sees him screaming and crying. And um, and then like, you know, like, never mind. I almost said something shady about Rachel. But so then we see them talking. And I actually kind of like this scene because it seemed like they had a point of connection. Like they talked things out. Obviously, you know, the scene was like much longer than what we actually saw of it. But it seemed like they came to some sort of a conclusion like resolution they seem to be in a better place he seemed to understand her she seemed to understand him they there were genuine apologies they kind of saw each other which i think is good right we like conflict and resolution on these shows and we like that there's you know a little bit of mending amongst the fences so I, you know i wasn't mad at it and she has to like break the news to ariana and ariana's like that's annoying like i can't believe she's like why do i want to hear about you making up with my ex you know and then she tells Lala, she's like, well, did you know that Tom tried to kill my dog because he locked him in my room and he ate food off of my counter? And like, what is that? That's rude. And I also like, not that I'm trying to defend Sandoval, but like, if that's Ariana's dog and like, I would understand like, this is your dog. I don't want to be responsible for this dog because like everything I do, every air, you know, that I breathe is just like always going to piss you off. So I'm going to like leave your dog in your room because your dog is your responsibility. Your dog is not my responsibility and I'm going to be blamed for something regardless. So, you know, what? I'm going to leave your dog in your room. That way it doesn't get into anything. And obviously he doesn't know that there's anything in her room that the dog isn't supposed to be eating because he's not allowed in her room and she doesn't want him in her room. So it's like she's setting the rules and he's clearly not breaking the rules necessarily. And, you know, I just, I don't know. It's just interesting, you know? I just, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm sad that the dog got into something that it shouldn't have eaten. But I also am like, well, but I can understand why he would keep the dog in her room and be like, that's your dog, that's your responsibility. That's kind of how they are, you know? No, locking Maya in the room was not the fucking fact. No, I agree. I don't like that he locked the dog in the room, but I can understand why he would lock the dog in the room because he's just like, Ariana, this is your dog. This is your responsibility. It was a dick move. I agree. You know, please stop putting the blame back on Ariana. It's not helpful or fair. Why is it not fair? And who is it unhelpful to? Who is it not helping? I'm analyzing a reality show. It's not that deep, my love. Um... I don't get how it's not fair. Tom's been blamed for literally, he blames for breathing, he gets blamed for breathing air. Not that he gives does himself any favors. Like, I'm not trying to defend Tom Sandoval at all, by any means. But I'm also just like, my God, like, you know, even if I hated my roommate, I would not treat the dog like that. What if we, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. But if it was his dog too for how many years? Yeah, but you see her and she's like, they're my babies. They're my dogs. They're, you know, I, and I get it. He's just like, well, fine. If it's your dog. I mean, the unfair part is the dog is the one that gets affected by it, right? So, Annette, who leaves food in the room? She's almost 40. I mean, Annette, don't you go blaming Ariana. That's not fair. How dare you say she's a grown woman? Why would she leave food in her bedroom? How dare you? That's unfair. 
and unhelpful. I don't know who it's unhelpful to, but it is unhelpful. Just Josh says, left food in the room all night and then didn't even clean it up in the morning. Guys, this conversation is unfair and unhelpful. How dare we try to say Ariana is a responsible adult that should take accountability for some of her own actions in her own bedroom with her own dog. How dare you? Or what? Or what? Um, okay, now Chad's turning on Ariana. That's not what I was going for. I wasn't going to have anybody turn on anybody. Jesus, tonight's live is very chaotic. Who let me go live tonight with a little wine in me? I mean, he was effing her friend when the dog died. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, but how that doesn't have anything to do with now. We can't always keep dragging it back to then. I never liked Ariana nor Tom. I love you, Zach. Thank you, Annette. I appreciate that. Ariana is a slob. Let's be clear. Okay, thank you. End up said it. Yell at her. That's unhelpful, end up. How dare you call her a slob? How dare you? Don't come for me when you're on OnlyFans for $7. The food could have been in a bag. Elon, nobody said crusty food on the dresser. Said old. Well, I mean, it was from the night before. She said it was from the night before and it was in a bag. Like it was like her takeout that she left. But I also think that's kind of, now that people are bringing that out, that is kind of gross to like leave your, your takeout on the counter. Sorry if this is unhelpful and unfair to Ariana to say that, but that is kind of gross. It just, I don't, I don't particularly like that. So. But I, I don't disagree with many, <laughs> with my, some of the comments. I don't know. We saw her room at the very first episode and it was messy as fuck. I said that. It's nasty as fuck. Definitely gross. Yeah, I, I agree. I've said that from the beginning. People got mad at me for saying, how dare you say that? She's living there. That's her room. It can be dirty if she wants it to. You're right. She can. You know? Anne wasn't there to throw her trash. See, because Anne hadn't been hired yet. So Anne should have been on it. But Anne wants to be doing more administrative stuff, not personal assistant stuff, even though Anne is a personal assistant. Look at Ariana's room versus Tom's room. Who's clean? Well, Tom's room looks like he's 19 in college, right? He looks like he's at a dorm. He doesn't even have like a, a bed frame. He doesn't have, um, like he just like has like a sheet that he sleeps like. They're both messy. They're just a different kind of messy, right? Watch out, Zach. You'll juju in the air and your pups will get into the food. Oh, hell no. You know, I took, we went to the dog park the other day and we brought all of the, the litter, litter mates, all of their siblings all together because it was their birthday, their one year birthday. And we brought them all out and the boys are being so good and everybody else's dog was acting up. And I was like, look at, I just want to, I was like, I just want the record to reflect that my boys have been very well behaved today. And literally two seconds after I say that, Sky and Sully, start like getting into a fight over a bone. And I'm like, when you guys live together, you share bones all the time. You pass the bone from back and forth and back and forth. Like it's Raquel between the Toms. And like now all of a sudden you're going to fight over it in front of everybody after I was just defending how well behaved you were. <laughs> the eating on the couch is all Zach needs. They better not do. Yeah. The eating of the couch is all. And we don't need any more eating of anything. Okay. No more. We're done with that life. The couch just continues to get destroyed. Like every day, the couch just continues to go. But it was funny. I did read a meme online and they're like, it's always when you say my dog would never do that, that all of a sudden your, start, your dog starts nevering like never before. And it's true. One time I was like, Zach, your dogs are your couch. So yeah, your dogs ate your couch. Yeah, and you want to fight about my couch? Don't get me started. I have to look at that damn thing every day. And people are like, when are you going to get a new couch? I'm like, when they're when the dogs have gone away. When I have no more dogs, I will get a new couch. Sarah Bahu's here. Sarah Bahu, we haven't seen you in forever, my love. How are you? We missed you. I would be so pissed if I had a roommate and we shared a space and they shut my dog in my room. Accident or not. It did happen. My friend Andy was talking about how he had a dog and his roommates, I guess, let the dog out of the crate. Something happened with the dog and he had the room, the dog and the dog was kept in the room and then the dog had to go potty, but then the dog couldn't go outside to go potty. So then the dog shit on the floor and then Andy came home and they didn't have air conditioner and he walked in and stepped right into the shit in his bedroom because the dog was in the bedroom. Shit happens, you know? Are we in a fight, Zach? I need the answer to my DM, please. What was the, what, what did you DM? Sorry, guys, I'm not as, the, the DMs have gotten unhinged. Um, so I don't check them as often. Sorry if I haven't responded. 
um, to some of your DMs. They were pa- piling up. I was looking this morning. I was like, oh my God, there's so many DMs giving me anxiety. But it also gives me anxiety to read a lot of them because some of you guys are mean. You're ruthless and toothless. Um, and I also like made a conscious choice. Like after talking about the autism stuff on Tuesday's, Wednesday's episode with Jacques, I was like, I'm going to intentionally like not look at the DMs this week, you know, just because I don't need other people's opinions about that kind of stuff for me. Um, you looked but didn't reply. Oh, I did. Well, I'm sorry, my love. I, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, my text messages give me anxiety. Exactly. Thank you, Crispy Tree. Oh, I just got a call. Oh, I never get to see a live. I know, Sarah. We're glad that you're here. Okay, so back to Vanderpump, right? Because we see um, we're at the sandwich tasting and Lala talks to Ariana and Ariana explains how, you know, Tom left the dog in the room and then Lala's like, I get it, but I think you should also like maybe consider having a conversation with him, like maybe to clear the air, maybe to like, you know, help you grieve some of the loss of this relationship. Like maybe it'll be healthy for you to just like let it all out. I, I also think it's probably not healthy to like hold all of that in. And it seems like she's holding a lot of it in. But then we get to the real mess of it all. And that's Brock. Because Brock tells Schwartz that Katie hooked up with Max Boyens. And they're calling it a revenge bang. And I was like, what in the Kristen Doty is a revenge bang? But it sounds interesting. I want to revenge bang somebody. Like that sounds really fun. Um, I almost revenge banged someone recently. Like, well, recently as in like maybe a few months, a couple months ago, I was going to revenge bang someone because they're, yeah. Well, basically what happened was one of my, what, what happened was one of my friends um, had a boyfriend and then he broke up with his boyfriend and then the boyfriend unfollowed me on Instagram. I was the only, yes, Michelle, the unfollow. Yep. He unfollowed on everybody else in the friend group remained on the follower list. I was the one that got removed as a follower. So I was like, you know what? That's not cool. So you know what? Maybe I'll fuck your boyfriend just to like show you that you don't unfollow me. My content is amazing. I'm fucking hilarious. And have you seen my gym selfies? I look fucking hot and you're going to unfollow me. The audacity, crispy treat. That's right. The audacity. So I think it was probably a very hot and sexy hookup between Max and Katie. Max is a cutie. Katie looked cuter back then. Um, I don't like the haircut. The little, you know, the lesbian cut is just not giving it to me, you know? So, yeah. Was it the little person? No, it was not the little person. How dare him unfollow you? Does he, who does he think he is? Thank you, Crispy Treat. See, validate me, you know? I mean, obviously I would never fuck, you know, my friend. Cause like, that's my friend. Well, I mean, <laughs> I've done that before, but this friend specifically, I have not fucked. Um, and I would not, I just, that would be very messy. And I'm already very messy. And my life is chaotic enough. And I got into a lot of trouble in that situation already that like, you know, I was like, maybe we, you know, because I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fuck him. And then I'm going to date him. And then I'm going to post all these Instagram stories. And I'm going to tag all our other friends. And I'll make sure that we're all going out together on double dates. That way he follows all everyone else in the friend group. Well, guess what? He's going to see my face on everybody's repost Instagram story. And what? That's right. Mm. Don't mess with me. Don't unfollow me. Didn't you talk about it on Disaster Daters? Did I? Probably. Probably. Zach, have you talked about Ariana being the new host of Love Island? We touched on that, yes. Uh, congrats. Good for her. Um, yeah. Does Katie smile or laugh? I don't know. I hear about it. It's like Bigfoot. You know, we hear about it, but we never see it. So maybe I've heard that it happens, but I'm not really sure. Does he know what you do for a living? Me? The ex that unfollowed me? Yes, he does know what I do for a living. You know? Never unfollow a podcast or gossip comment. That's another thing. Thank you for that comment, Crispy Treat. Thank you. Because that is a great point. What makes you think that you're going to unfollow me? Not only am I hilarious, but what makes you think you're going to unfollow me and then I'm not going to use it in my content? Not big foot. Well, Katie has a small foot. She has a little feet. A little, little teeny petite feet. You know, petite feet. Um, I cannot wait to see Schwartz's hair travesty. Oh, that's coming up right when he goes blonde. Oof. You pass it back and forth like Raquel in the top. <laughs> you guys are quoting me all a whole bunch tonight. I don't even think these things through. They just come out of my mouth. And you wonder why I get in trouble. I get myself in trouble all the damn time. 
it's funny. There was this like koozie at like a liquor store or something that Josh saw and he sent it. He took a picture of it and sent it to me. And he's like, oh, look, somebody made a koozie about you. And it said, um, I have a really good heart, but this mouth gets me into some shit. This mouth gets me into trouble all the time. And it's true. I can't help it. I am who I am. My mouth is just like, bah, 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 bah. So, yeah. It is what it is. I am who I am. Um, but so we see Brock. And Brock wants to be real messy like he's Kim D, right? He's like Joe Gorga. And he's coming on and he's like, ooh, look what I got. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Got a little bit of tea. Going to just sprinkle it all over here and let you know that Katie did a revenge bang with Max Boyens. And then Sheena comes over and he's just like, hi, Sheena. And um, she's like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, ha, ha, ha. I just told Schwartz that Katie banged Max. And she's like, what? What do you mean you told Schwartz that Katie banged Max? How dare you? And then she punched him like she punched Raquel, you know? And then he's like, why are you getting so mad at me? And she's like, because you weren't like now all of a sudden I'm going to get in trouble with Katie. And I just made up with Katie. And like Katie's going to rage text me now. And do you know how annoying that is when she rage texts me and then she hides her location so that I don't know when she's banging other people? And Sheena has like 56 people with her location on, which is very strange if you think about it. Um, like I've shared my location like temporarily. I don't leave it un indefinitely like shared with people. But like I've shared my location before with other people when being like, hey, not recently, but like back back in the day um, I'd be like, I'm going on a date tonight. Here's my location in case I get murdered. You know where to find me. I would do stuff like that, but like I haven't shared my location. I I didn't even realize people still did that, um, or why people even do that. But now I want people to share their location with me so I can keep tabs on them, and I can be like, "Oop, bitch is here." Oh, you said you're on your way. Well, you're still at your fucking apartment. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're stopping there. What are you getting a booty call on your way? That's why you're late. Oh, Starbucks will buy me one too, bitch. So you know, is that a common thing to do? follow that many people's locations. No, it's not common. It's so weird. It's so bizarre. It's not a normal thing. Is Brock bitter because Sheena didn't get him any an eye watch? I no, I think Brock's just messy. I think Brock like likes mess. Unless it's your mom. Your mom should always have your location just in case. My mom doesn't have my location. My mom my mother's never asked for my location. Now you're gonna go and touch on my childhood traumas, really? Another thing my mother didn't do right, Crispy Treat. Just put salt in the wound. But yeah. Oh, you share your location with your husband, your sister, and your BFF. I literally don't share my location with anybody. And that's probably dangerous because I live in downtown and I'm alone. But you know what? I have two big dogs. And if there's anything scarier than those two big dogs, it's my mouth. So nobody better fuck with me. I'm sorry. You can share your location with me. I'll be your mom. No, thank you. I appreciate the gesture, but I don't need no mamas. I have too many mamas now. I can only share my location with my husband and my bestie. Interesting. I love you tonight. Thank you, Jen. I love me every night. Hashtag self-love. Did you guys see poor Dylan from below deck next to Katie when Brock and Katie were arguing? No, I didn't realize he was there. I also don't watch below deck, so I wouldn't have recognized him anyway. I don't share my location unless I'm going on a road trip. Then I end when I arrive. But, so you make it to the... Destination, your dogs have to protect your mouth. Listen, it was Sky's. <laughs> Sky got my mouth. That boy is feisty. That boy is ready for a fight at any time. And I'm like, where did you learn that from? Who taught you how to be ready for a fight at all times? Somebody looks at you wrong, you're like, bitch, what? That's Sky. Sky's like, you sniffed me too many damn times. Snap. Don't touch me. So. Just we're trying our best. He's he's very friendly though. He is very friendly. He just is feisty. He has a feisty side to him. You know? Somebody comes at the door and he's like ready to fight. He's like, who is it? I'm, let me get it. I'm gonna fuck him up. And so he's like, what's going on? What's going on? Who's here? Oh, what is that noise? Oh. Sully is Sully's a Raquel. I'll tell you that. Not the sharpest tool in the shed. And he would he too would accidentally fuck his best friend's boyfriend of, of seven months. And then be like, I don't get it. What did I do wrong? I was just loving. It's just love, Dad. I just love everybody. I love everything. Love, love, love. 
Matt Sullivan. This guy's as sharp as attack, though. Yeah, this guy will fuck everybody up. Like, real talk, though. <laughs> My mom's like, if I'm ever in a dark alley by myself, Sky's the only, of all the dogs, she's like, Sky's the one I want. And Sky's the smallest one, too. He's little, like me. I'm five foot eight, but I can pop off on a bitch like I'm six four. Rachel name dropping wasn't a big drop like she thought it would be. Oh, yeah, when she was like, here are all the people that knew about the affair. Which, by the way, I talked to Max about that, and I talked to Kyle Chan about that, because I think those are the only two that I really knew on that list. Um, about the affair. And Max is like, I absolutely did not know about the, the affair. She's crazy. And Kyle's like, I did know about the affair, but like, I apologize. Like, he's like, I, it was what it was. My friend was having an affair. I didn't like it. I apologize to Ariana for it. He's like, but it is what it was, you know? <laughs> but do you think that Brock was being messy? Obviously, but like, I, I'm not mad that Katie's doing a revenge bit. Well, it is a little hypocritical, but at the same time, I'm more mad at Max than I am at Katie. Cause like Max, like that is your friend now. That's your boy. Whereas Katie has no loyalty left to Schwartz, especially after what he did. Um, yeah, last year. So yeah, he betrayed, he broke the one rule, which was not to date anybody in the friend group. So, you know, Max is the one that I'm a little more salty at ah, drop down expensive and i still don't give a fuck so i thought that this was overall good episode of vanderpump seven out of ten highly recommend next season looks i sorry next week looks like it's only going to get better it looks like it's going to progressively continue to um to get better with each week which i'm very excited about what we're on episode 11 I think we have like five left, five or six episodes left. So yeah, um, it's weird that Dana is Max's ex and now she's doing a podcast with Katie. Interesting. Max really gets around. Good for him. He's like, Rachel, spread that coochie boy. Spread it. What about the valley? We're getting there. We just finished Vanderpump Rules and now we're switching over to the valley, which is interesting. Oh, it's episode nine? Why did I think it was episode 11? Hmm. Well, I guess it was episode nine. I don't know. It says it in the description. Don't trust me. I have wine on my brain. Um, but we have the valley. And the valley, I think, is good. The valley is probably, well, I mean, I guess a little. Listen, Jax and Kristen know when to clock in. Jax and Kristen know when to bring it. Jax is messy. And when they're saying like, oh my God, it's a competition between who's the messiest, Jax or Kristen. Yeah, that's what Vanderpump Rules is missing. They're missing a Jax and Kristen. Could you imagine if we had Jax and Kristen during Scandaval and during the fallout of Scandaval? Like that would have been so much better. The show would have been thriving right now because Kristen would have been on it. Jax would have been on it. You know, I like that we see their relationship and they're just like, oh, we're like brother and sister. We have known each other for 16 years. And like, oops, there was one time where we like banged a couple of times watching Drive. But like, it's okay. We're brother and sister now. You know, you would have never guessed we banged. So. <laughs> Interesting considering their history. But like, I'm very much appreciating this season um, so that this episode of the Valley focused a lot on like Kristen. Uh, yeah, Kristen and Luke. Our last season was mainly, or sorry, last week's episode was mainly about Kristen and Luke and them moving too fast because now she wants to have a baby with him. And then this week it was all about her nipple. And Jesse grabbed her nipple. She give, gave him a titty twister and he was trying to motorboat her, right? And she's like, oh, it's not that big of a deal, LOL. And then Luke's like, what do you mean it's not that big of a deal? I'm going to chop some wood on his face. And then... He Luke decides to like take it upon himself to like go out and and you know talk to Jesse and Jesse's like I don't even remember it. And he's like I don't care if you don't remember it. It happened, bro. And I was like, whoa, Luke, let's tone it down just like a little. Like he's having a very you know level head. Like Jesse has a tendency to pop off from what we've seen in the previews. So let's like you know I understand we need to have a conversation with him, but it doesn't seem like he did it to be like, oh yeah, let me fill up your chick. Yeah, I'm Mr. Still Your Girl. You know? I just thought like it was an, a knee-jerk impulse. It was still inappropriate. I'm not trying to say that it was right in any way. It was wrong and it was inappropriate. That's what homegirl should have been crying about rather than him, you know, pantsing that other guy. Jax pantsing that guy. 
and showing the dick and we didn't even get to see the dick. I was hoping we could at least see the dick. The Valley is really good, Sarah Bahu. You need to watch the, the, the Valley. I agree with you. I'm a double zero. That is highly inappropriate for him to be, for him to touch her boob at all and to grab her nipple. She didn't really seem bothered by it. It seemed like everybody else was making more of a bigger thing than she was. But so anyway, that's we, we have a lot to talk about that. And then Jax decides to invite Luke for a guy's night to try and get to know him better. And then Jax is like, you know what? What would be really good is not only to invite Kristen's current ex, but you know what? Let's also or to invite Kristen's current boyfriend, but let's also invite her ex. That'll make things nice because then they can talk about Kristen and maybe squash, you know, and be cool with each other so that when we all hang out, they can hang out together. And then Kristen doesn't know about this and Luke doesn't know about this. And then Brittany tries to tell, you know, Kristen about the fact that Luke is about to meet Alex. And Kristen's like, what do you mean? And Brittany's like, what do you mean? What do I mean? Have some beer cheese or doovers, anyone, you know? And then she went on Instagram today and she's like, look at my lip is no longer fucked up. So stop making fun of me. Because her lip is like, she's like, you know, her lip like that. It's just, she can't talk because her lip is like, it's like frozen. So she's fighting with Kristen and she's like, Kristen, rot in hell. And Kristen's like, Brittany, screw you. How would you feel? And Brittany's like, rot in hell, Kristen. And then we see that that continues to blow up. And next week, you know, T, she had chin lipo. Yeah, that's why, I, didn't she say that? Didn't we see her with the, um, yeah, we saw it. So yeah, look, if nips were the same, then Insta would let girlies, no, I agree with you, Sarah Lowry. Guys can post their nipples and women can't. My mom says the same thing all the time. When she sees a guy take her shirt off, she's like, I'm going to take my shirt off too. And I'm like, please don't, you know, that's my mother for you. But listen, Jax decides to bring, um, to invite, Luke and to invite Alex. Kristen flips out about it. Luke doesn't feel happy about it. That's super awkward for him because he's like, Jax, why would you invite? Like, I don't want to get to know Alex. I don't want to be friends with Alex. Like, he's my girlfriend's ex and she's not comfortable around him. So I don't want to be comfortable around him. So Luke does kind of see, you know, does kind of see, seem like a nice guy. Um, seems level headed. Seems like he really wants to defend and, and and fight for Kristen. He's not from this world. It'll be interesting to see how things turn now that he does get to be more part of this world, right? Because he met Kristen when she was like not the Kristen famous that she is now that she's back on the Valley and she's back in Bravo's Good Graces. Like, you know, he met her on the way down and now she's going back on the way up. And I'm curious how that's going to affect the relationship. I mean, they've lasted this long. And good for them, you know? Episode two, and I still don't know the new people's names. I know Jesse. And I know Jasmine Good, Zach, who's the gay guy. Um, God, who's the hot guy? The one that almost, well, that Jack's pants, and then his dick was on display. And isn't his wife Nia or something like that? I don't know. Kristen needs Botox on that lip to freeze that mouth. Oh, actually, Botox on the lips does wonders for you. It like gives you a little lip flip and like pumps up your lips a little bit. It's actually a good thing. So it would not be bad. He's like Luke from Summer House. He is. Oh, it's Danny and Nia. That's oh, so I got Nia right. Danny's the hot one. Jesse's also hot. And then there's the boring couple that's pregnant. Not as interesting. On Kristen's podcast, they sound really good for each other. Yeah, I think Luke is good. Luke is a dud. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, but sometimes like that's what you need. You need a dud. You know, you need somebody to balance out crazy Kristen. Like with me, when I date somebody, I need to date a dud. Because if I date somebody that's got a big personality, you know, like that's fireworks, you know, which is exciting. I'm like, ah, oh, red flags. Yes. Give me all the red flags. You know, my favorite. Oh, Jesse and Michelle. Yes, we know Jesse and Michelle split. They announced their split. I mean, that we saw that coming, right? But yeah. Oof. His wife crying about the PP being exposed was comedy, but I feel bad that she was so upset. She was just hormonal. That's all it was. Like it was just hormones that were really getting the best of her. Um, so I don't feel that bad, but it was, it was ridiculous. I was like, girl, why are you crying? Pull yourself. I was like, Edna, pull yourself together. Jax can't handle the lawyer. Which one's the lawyer? I don't remember. We're all learning their names. It's only week two. We'll learn them by next week. 
Nia, aka former Miss USA, and she coached Rachel on the pageant. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember that. Yeah, because they they've all been around these people. They know all of them. They know all the details of their inner relationships and stuff. But yeah. I thought the Valley was good. It looks like it's only going to get better next week because Kristen really pops off. But listen, what Kristen knows how to do is activate people. She knows how to get them to work for their check. Good for them. Jason is the lawyer. Yes. He's the Asian guy, right? And he has the wife and she's pregnant. I like them all except Brittany and Jax. Jason's lawyer. Yeah. Um, I Yeah, I'm not a fan of... Well, no, I am a fan of Brittany. How dare you say you like them all except for Brittany and Jax? Brittany and Jax are the show. Period. End of story. Hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. She had so many babies. Those hormones are all off the charts. Exactly. And she's allowed to, like, have that moment, you know? <sighs> Janet is BFFs with Stassi. Okay. Good for Janet. Um. That's all I got for you. That's uh, Valley was great. Vanderpump was good, solid. I feel like it's only going to get better now. Oh, we still have to get the storyline of the the Sheena's nanny that Katie hooked up with and that Schwartz hooked up with. Like now they're just really hooking up with everybody to get back at each other. And I ain't mad at it. It's making the show interesting, you know? Brittany's accent annoys me. She's from Kentucky. Janet is with Jason. Yes, Janet's the pregnant one, right? No, Jason is married to Michelle. Jesse is married to Michelle. Janet is married to Jason. Yes, that is correct. The dude who didn't spend time in the 90s skating but studying is the lawyer. Got it. If I see any couples counseling or doctor's appointments in this series, I'm starting a petition or something because no filler content. Boring. So over that stuff being televised. They're going to put some of that in there. But I feel like so far, they, like it's been solid. They've been giving us some really good scenes. At first, I wasn't as interested in these new couples and like their home scenes, but like now that we're getting to know them a lot better, I'm starting to like them a lot more. So yeah, that's what I got for you. Um, any other closing thoughts about the Valley or Vanderpump before we wrap? You are my fire. Revenge hookups sounds hot. Nobody is revengeful for me, though. I still would love a revenge hookup, you know? I would love a good revenge hookup. Are my comments coming through? Yes, Stacey, your comments are coming through. I thought Janet was married to Jesse. I don't think so. Um, I'm into both shows. I am, too. Uh, Tuesday nights are lit. And now Wednesday nights, too, because we're here recapping them on Wednesdays. I watch everything the next day. I don't watch anything live anymore. I always watch the on-demand stuff because it's too late and I'm tired. I'm up at 4.30. I think I, I keep saying every day. I've worked out like literally every day this year. Um, been hitting the gym, except for the first like week or two I took off because I'd injured my, I overextended my hip flexor and I couldn't really walk. Um, but since then it's healed and I've been going hard every day been doing the damn thing um but i was like oh, I, every morning i wake up and i'm like i need to take a day off i need to let my body rest and then i'm like you know what fuck it nope we're up we're out we're doing it tapped in turned on tuned in tapped in tuned in turned on boom drop down expensive and i still don't give a fuck okay well that's it thanks for tuning in guys i love you guys i appreciate you guys i'll see you next wednesday so be sure to catch up if you haven't done so yet. 5.30 a.m. orthodontist appointment for the middle kid. 5.30. Who has an orthodontist appointment at 5.30 in the morning? Why is an orthodontist awake at 5.30 in the morning? That is so early for an orthodontist appointment. That's crazy, JC. That doesn't sound real. Huh. Same sees back at 4.30 workouts. Let's go, doll. Let's get it, Molly. All right, guys, I love you. I appreciate you. You keep hurting your hip. You don't want to walk like an old man. Um, I know. <laughs> I was going to like have a rebuttal. So I was like, you're right. I was like, I can't even respond to that because like, you're right. Um, all right. I love you guys. Uh, I didn't mean you were pissing me off. I meant I'm getting pissed off that I don't have anything exciting like Mallory. Oh, Mallory has all the excitement. All right. 
Thank you guys. Love you guys. Have a good time tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Or actually, no, not tomorrow morning. We're not streaming first thing in the morning. We're streaming a little later. I believe we're at 1130 Pacific, 1230. Hold on. Let me double check the calendar. Um, I will let you know in one second, one second, one second. Uh, 1230, so noon 30 Pacific, 330 Eastern. So 330 Eastern time, 330 New York time. I will be live here on the YouTube, and we will be chatting with Jeremy from Love is Blind. So if you have questions for Jeremy from Love is Blind, let me know because he's going to be live on the YouTube channel. So get ready. Jeremy from Love is Blind is going to be here. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Drop down. Expensive. Yes, guys. And hit the like button on your way out if you enjoyed tonight. Jeremy. Yeah. All right. Ciao for now. Bye. Thank you, Danny, for the super sticker. Love you guys.